or ask directly, no need to type anything. Dr. Kalman, when you're ready, please begin. Okay, I, I'm ready. Uh, do you see me, hear me? We okay. can hear you and see you fine. Uh, I'm uh, uh, very uh, glad to, uh, to participate in this discussion uh, with uh, representatives of the media. And I'd be glad even to have contact with uh, them either after the discussion. And uh, we are in a very uh, serious crisis today vis-a-vis uh, -vis Hamas in Gaza, but not only in, uh, in Gaza. So I will give you first a presentation uh, in uh, three uh, uh, parts, if you want. The first one, I, I try to give a, a background of the political crisis. What uh, led uh, the Hamas to decide on this uh, attack, uh, to initiate the attack against Israel, uh, then to speak about the military aspects uh, of the operation. And uh, uh, th uh, the third part will be, I think, uh, uh, devoted more to the uh, uh, external actors, uh, first of all, the United States, but also regional actors which uh, have influence, I think, uh, in the situation, especially as the uh, uh, crisis is developing and uh, it is not clear yet how it will uh, finish. So uh, I'm uh, personally convinced that uh, the main reason uh, for the decision of Hamas to uh, attack Israel was the fact that uh, uh, Chairman uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, cancelled the elections. Uh, the Hamas leadership was almost sure uh, that they will take uh, on the control of the Palestinian Authority during the elections and possibly and probably also uh, the presidency uh, after that uh, because Fatah was divided uh, in three uh, lists uh, and moreover there were several dozens uh, Fatah members which run as independents and it was a situation very similar uh, of 2005 when Hamas uh, won the uh, parliament uh, in the same situ situation, perhaps now uh, the situation was uh, uh, worse. So the, uh, this was a huge disappointment for the leadership of Hamas, which was almost prepared to come to Jerusalem and form a new uh, government and perhaps also to take control of the PLO. Uh, the second reason is they read quite well the uh, uh, Israeli society uh, some of the leaders, including the uh, Sinwar, which was for 20 years in our uh, prisons, uh, know very well the Israeli society and the politics. And they understood that Israel is in a very weak political situation. After two years uh, of uh, four elections, and even in this moment, without uh, a government, only a government uh, in transition, with a very uh, serious crisis between two camps inside Israel, and uh, having an Islamist party, the party of uh, 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 Abbas, Mansour Abbas, uh, as a balance uh, in order to decide who uh, of the two, the right or the, uh, if not the uh, uh, parties of the center and the uh, left will uh, have the power. This was an important incentive, I think, uh, for the uh, Hamas decision. The third element was uh, the, some uh, tactical uh, errors, important uh, errors uh, from the Israeli government and the police, especially in this very uh, sensible period of the Ramadan holidays. Uh, for instance, the uh, decision to uh, throw uh, uh, grenades uh, uh, inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, the fact that uh, the uh, uh, demonstration with Israeli flags uh, at the last moment uh, was changed and during the festivities, there was some kind of uh, fire on the, uh, uh, near the Al-Aqsa and nobody from the Israeli government intervened to explain what happens there. So all these uh, tactical, uh, uh, and this, this is not all, but uh, these are the most important ones, gave Hamas the impression that uh, the tension is such and the support of the population, the Muslim population uh, in Jerusalem and in the, uh, the West Bank is sufficient uh, to give them uh, the possibility to trigger, to trigger the, uh, the attack. Uh, now, from the military point of view, uh, uh, I know that uh, many think that they were surprised. Indeed, they were surprised in some aspects, uh, especially the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, their uh, strategy, if you have no tactics, to use the missiles and rockets uh, against the uh, uh, Iron Dome, uh, which they thought that they will uh, uh, 
succeed in uh, uh, finding uh, a technical solution by uh, striking massive uh, fire of missiles did not work. So from this point of view, the Israeli citizens and territory I have uh, quite well uh, defended and uh, we have relatively uh, few, uh, uh, few uh, victim casualties. Uh, I think uh, this moment we 11 or 12. Uh, but uh, at the same time, they knew also that uh, the uh, underground uh, uh, battlefront was uh, actually uh, denied from them because uh, Israel built a very important, uh, uh, strong, uh, technologically uh, sophisticated uh, defense uh, underground. Uh, so uh, they thought that they would use, uh, for instance, uh, uh, new weapons that they prepared, for instance, the uh, uh, drones, and they have various uh, kinds of drones, uh, those which uh, were uh, destroyed by the uh, Air Force. Uh, and uh, they have also uh, small drones which can attack the urban areas. Uh, by the way, they use them uh, several times, uh, uh, very few occasions against uh, some Israeli soldiers and also for intelligence. Uh, so this was also a surprise that uh, Israel succeeded actually to destroying uh, these kind of att uh, attempts. Uh, uh, the same on the naval uh, level, uh, we heard about the activity of uh, the Israeli Navy only the last uh, two, three days, but this was a very important, uh, uh, important uh, uh, success of the uh, IDF because it stopped the possibility that uh, the uh, kind of uh, uh, sea seals uh, that they had developed, a special force, which uh, they thought that can attack Israel's uh, urban centers or villages, or perhaps to take uh, uh, prisoners, also were destroyed practically by the intervention of uh, our uh, sea, uh, uh, the Marines and the, the, the Navy. Uh, and uh, uh, there was the uh, uh, strong uh, uh, bombardment uh, by uh, very uh, uh, sophisticated uh, new uh, uh, bombs that Israel developed, which can penetrate uh, not only the uh, cement they built, but also uh, practically the, what is called the metro or the underground tunnels that are uh, a very important infrastructure for uh, deciding how to fight uh, the Israeli forces in case they enter the territory uh, of Gaza and uh, much of it was destroyed. Uh, unfortunately, probably the uh, very important uh, attack, uh, I think three days ago, did not succeed perhaps to uh, kill uh, uh, as many uh, uh, combat combatants that uh, it was uh, uh, planned uh, still uh, they suffered uh, important losses, uh, especially at the medium and the medium high level uh, of their military commanders, uh, those which were responsible for uh, uh, the uh, uh, industrial infrastructure which produces the missiles, for those which are involved in the cyber. And I think that the, the destruction of the uh, Al Jazeera building has something to do with this capability of uh, Hamas to use uh, communications and uh, SIGINT, uh, and uh, this was also uh, neutralized. Uh, but unfortunately, there are uh, two caveats, in my opinion. One is that uh, Israel has not found uh, the uh, necessary uh, tools or tactics how to uh, destroy uh, beforehand uh, all these, uh, uh, this huge uh, arsenal of uh, missiles, which uh, particularly all of them are uh, underground, Practically the majority of them are automated. They don't need, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, activated by uh, uh, combatants which are far from these places. And uh, we see that they continue to, uh, to attack uh, our uh, cities uh, and uh, our military. Uh, they did not succeed by the way to uh, strike to strategic, uh, uh, strategic uh, uh, Israeli, uh, as targets, for instance, they try to fire to Dimona, they fire to uh, military airports and, and so on. Uh, but still, uh, they had an arsenal that was evaluated uh, to 12, 14,000 uh, missiles. Uh, they already, I think, uh, uh, lost or uh, fired some 2,500. Uh, the number of uh, long range missiles is uh, clearly uh, smaller, much more, perhaps 10%, 50%. But I think they keep them 
always like they did in the past, and by the way, like uh, as Hezbollah did, they keep them as a strategic reserve uh, for the end, if you want, of the uh, conflict, uh, at this, uh, uh, this conflict uh, and for the future also. Uh, and also the second caveat is that they are uh, convinced, I think, from the uh, declarations by our leaders, uh, including the Prime Minister, the Minister of uh, Defense, that uh, uh, Israel is not, uh, it does not intend, uh, has no intention uh, to penetrate uh, uh, on the ground and take control of part of the Gaza because I think uh, uh, it is not necessary. We succeeded uh, to have a lot of uh, advantages only striking uh, by the uh, air force, by ground forces, because we see that we use uh, artillery, which by the way is also some kind of uh, more precise art artillery shells and also uh, the Navy. Uh, and therefore perhaps uh, this evaluation permitted them not to enter in the trap that uh, our uh, uh, army tried to, uh, to, to, to stage and uh, not many enter these uh, tunnels, uh, this metro underground uh, the moment of the, the bombings. Uh, so I think that uh, in the next uh, days, uh, we'll uh, see the continuation of this, uh, of this uh, uh, firing of missiles. Uh, today, uh, they strike uh, massively, not only today, the last day, two, three days, massively to the main uh, southern cities, uh, Ashkelon and uh, Ashdod, uh, which are more difficult to, uh, to defend also because the time that the uh, citizens have to take shelter is much shorter than in the center of Israel or in Tel Aviv. Uh, so they announced even today that I think that later in the night uh, or in the evening, uh, uh, they are also looking for the prime time of our news. They will try to fire a long range uh, missiles. Uh, and as in the past, they will uh, use this kind of long range missiles uh, at the last moment, even if it will be a ceasefire. Uh, and, uh, in my opinion, uh, because of the international uh, pressure that is growing, uh, especially after the, I think, the uh, discussion in the Security Council, the United States decided to stop, uh, or not to, uh, to cancel, but to try to, uh, the, uh, uh, not to permit uh, uh, a vote uh, on a, a resolution which is not uh, uh, favorable, was very unfavorable to Israel, but uh, I think the United States does not have this possibility for a much time. So perhaps in three, four days, uh, we see the United States pressing uh, Israel, uh, and by the way, also the European Union to achieve or to agree to a ceasefire. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to, to speak a bit about the uh, uh, American uh, uh, position because I think it had influence uh, on the Hamas uh, decision also, uh, in the sense that the new uh, Biden administration uh, was seen, uh, first of all, by the Palestinian authorities, but also perhaps by the uh, Hamas as a much uh, uh, more uh, friendly uh, great power. Uh, and the fact that, for instance, uh, 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 the United States is uh, very much involved and is uh, uh, running, in my opinion, running to try to reach a, a nuclear deal with Iran, uh, also puts uh, some uh, kind of pressure on the American administration. Uh, we saw, for instance, that the uh, United States government decided quite, almost immediately after Biden became president uh, to uh, take out uh, the Houthis uh, as a, a, a terrorist organization from the list of terrorist organizations. Now, the Houthis uh, not only are a terrorist organization supported by Iran, which uh, uh, was firing missiles to Saudi Arabia, but even after this, this American decision, they continue to fire missiles and there is no real change from the American side. Uh, perhaps also the decision to leave uh, quickly uh, Afghanistan uh, also influences uh, at least, uh, you, I would say, uh, psychologically the Hamas thinking that the administration uh, is uh, ready to leave the Middle East, is not uh, 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 ready to be involved uh, seriously in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, so they can be more uh, free in order to advance uh, their, uh, their uh, goals and to continue the uh, fight, at least uh, continue the uh, uh, firing of missiles. The other uh, uh, regional players, uh, I think one of the objectives of uh, the uh, Hamas move was to sabotage the Abraham Accords. Uh, clearly from their point of view, uh, the uh, uh, their first, first of all, their supporter, Qatar, uh, became uh, much more weaker uh, the last months 
because they uh, uh, were uh, achieving some kind of understanding of Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. Uh, and also another supporter, Turkey, uh, was quite uh, eager uh, the last months uh, to have some uh, uh, better relations with Israel, again, on the background of uh, uh, the threat from their point of view of the Biden administration, which is not so uh, favorable to Erdogan like uh, President uh, Trump was at his time. So uh, this regional situation is important uh, on the one hand to Hamas and also to Israel because Israel uh, does not want to sabotage or to have problems with the new uh, allies. Uh, I would say that the uh, uh, United Arab Emirates are today uh, serious allies of Israel in the region uh, because uh, uh, more fighting, especially more civilian uh, victims on the Palestinian side, will uh, provoke uh, uh, provoke uh, uh, a reaction, negative reaction from their part. Uh, so uh, uh, there are two more fronts that are very important and uh, uh, in which uh, uh, Hamas has been successful. One uh, is uh, the fact that uh, uh, some, uh, and it, for the moment it's not clear how many people in the West Bank, in uh, Samaria and, and Judea, uh, support the Hamas, uh, Hamas moves. They have called uh, to Fatah uh, uh, military Tanzim uh, uh, cells to take arms against Israel. And this will be a very important uh, uh, challenge and test tomorrow, because I think uh, there is a decision of a general strike uh, in the West Bank, and this can be uh, serious development if there will be more uh, deadly incidents like the ones that uh, one two days ago uh, provoked uh, uh, 11 uh, Palestinian uh, uh, casualties. And uh, in my opinion, the most serious, uh, uh, the most serious threat is the uh, riots by uh, Israeli Arabs, uh, which uh, uh, again, and I don't enter here in all the background, uh, which led to this kind of uh, uh, violent uh, uh, riots, uh, deadly riots by Arabs against Jews, and also the retaliation by uh, Israeli hooligans or the right-wing uh, 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 extremists on our side. But this endangers the uh, social fabric uh, of uh, uh, Israel and also endangers uh, possibility of uh, us, uh, forming a serious government, uh, a stable government uh, in Israel in the next uh, weeks or months and so could destabilize uh, our, our internal situation. So I think that uh, uh, I gave a uh, kind of panorama that uh, now if you have uh, uh, more questions, we can perhaps uh, go deeper uh, uh, and try to, to, to find, uh, at least for my part, to find answers to your uh, queries uh, to this uh, situation. And also I can discuss other issues if, uh, if you are interested and if we have fi earth time. Thank you very much. We're going to open first questions. Hi, Hana. Yes, hi. Go ahead. Hi, Eli. Shalom. It's Hana Berry is here. Shalom, Hana. Mashalom, Ha. For those who don't know, Eli speaks Spanish very well. So, you know, I'm offering you for the Spanish speakers. Not now. Not now. Not now. Not now. No, of course. Eli, I I missed. I'm sorry. The figures you mentioned regarding the rockets. You got some figures and I, I didn't catch them properly, if you can repeat them. And um, I, I would like you, if you may, to elaborate on how, what can be said, you know, as, as deep as, uh, we know, as many details as possible regarding how Hamas managed to accumulate such an arsenal and what we know for sure it still has left. Okay, first, first of all, the numbers that I gave were evaluations by our intelligence uh, several months ago. I think uh, not, it's not the last evaluation, but uh, it spoke about uh, 12 to 14,000 uh, missiles and rockets. Uh, we must divide between the rockets, which are uh, uh, short range and uh, uh, long range missiles, which by the way, again, uh, represent some 15 or 20 percent from the overall uh, numbers. Uh, now, the problem of uh, the, of the, uh, the uh, this uh, huge arsenal uh, is uh, that the Israeli government uh, actually uh, the government permitted uh, the accumulation uh, of this uh, arsenal uh, in the first uh, times uh, after the Hamas took control of uh, uh, Gaza in 2007. 
they had a huge uh, network of uh, of uh, uh, tunnels uh, to uh, Sinai through uh, the Egyptian uh, Egyptian border, uh, uh, which were not controlled, by the way, uh, neither by the Egyptians nor by the Israelis, and they uh, received or smuggled huge amounts. Uh, first of all, of uh, uh, the beginning, uh, more primitive uh, primitive uh, uh, rockets, and then even grabbed uh, uh, missiles which have a uh, five meter longs, uh, and uh, they came mainly from Iran through Sudan, uh, if you remember Israel, several times, uh, uh, several times uh, bombed uh, such uh, uh, convoys of uh, missiles in Sudan itself, and even the kind of facility that the Iranians built in Sudan in order to uh, provide weapons to Hamas. So Israel, uh, I don't remember the, the, the year, I think 2012 or 13, bombed uh, such a facility. Uh, the second is that uh, uh, during uh, this period of, uh, I would say, liberal access to Gaza, uh, the Iranians sent some uh, technicians uh, to uh, teach them how to construct, uh, how to build the infrastructure, industrial infrastructure, and uh, they succeeded uh, quite uh, well because they uh, succeeded, uh, uh, they had good engineers, uh, they were motivated, and also, there was a time when they received the know-how even from Hezbollah. For instance, uh, there were uh, in the 2008, 10, uh, 12 uh, boats that Hezbollah sent to Gaza Strip, which were caught by our Navy. And uh, we found uh, hundreds of uh, CD-ROMs. At that time, they were used CD-ROMs software in order to uh, teach them how to build this kind of uh, rockets. Uh, as concerns, for instance, the uh, um, uh, drones, uh, they uh, outsourced uh, this kind of uh, te uh, technological uh, development to uh, two uh, experts. One was in Tunisia and he was uh, killed probably by the Mossad uh, in a quite a rocambolesque operation, if not in Tunisia, in Tunis. Uh, the guy uh, was a Tunisian uh, engineer and the other one was a Palestinian engineer which was killed in uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. But this uh, the, uh, permitted still uh, as we see the, uh, the, the building of uh, the infrastructure, what we saw uh, the cut bombs or the, uh, I would say, middle uh, range uh, uh, drones that uh, they showed on TV and we uh, uh, showed on our TV, uh, Ababil, uh, they, uh, these are Iranians. Uh, Iranian, they probably uh, arrived in uh, pieces and were constructed, reconstructed in uh, Gaza Strip and still we succeeded to uh, to uh, to uh, destroy. Uh, they also, we know that they try to smuggle uh, through our uh, border, uh, small uh, drones, which are, by the way are very dangerous because they can fly with the GPS and attack uh, with explosive as pre uh, precise or specific uh, target in an urban area, for instance, or in a military base. Uh, and uh, these are uh, mainly uh, Japanese, well, Chinese, uh, drones and they smuggle it uh, under the guise of uh, uh, toys or uh, agri agricultural uh, machines. And uh, our, uh, our uh, customs, uh, with the support of uh, our uh, security uh, service, uh, succeeded in uh, uh, discovering a part of this uh, smuggling, but still they have some uh, or they have constructed because, by the way, even uh, in Israel, well, uh, we know we have some 30,000 drones uh, in private hands, uh, many young people. Uh, there are people which are constructing their own uh, drones, uh, uh, which uh, have uh, specific uh, uh, internet websites where they give instructions how to construct such, uh, such drones. Because we are sending uh, such uh, uh, material for metals or electronics, they can adapt this kind of uh, uh, devices and build their own uh, drones. The same, what we saw, the last some, some, some kind of submarine or uh, automatic, autom automated uh, uh, submarine, which is a small, which is a small, uh, really uh, uh, not boat, but uh, under underwater boat, uh, which exists today, by the way, again on the market. It is not clear uh, for me, at least, uh, until this moment, if they constructed it in Gaza or if they succeeded in smuggling. It, uh, through the 
uh, uh, boats that are using for uh, for fishing, and uh, in one night they could bring one or two of these, in spite of the Israeli Navy being very careful not to permit it. Thank you, Carrie. Yes, uh, my question is uh, why? Yeah, is can I know, I know Anna Bear is. Uh, Carrie Hart with Network Global News. My my question is why is Israel not? Uh, able to achieve deterrence yet. Uh, was Israel surprised that, that Hamas had become more sophisticated like Hezbollah with more Iranian uh, backing than they expected and uh, with uh, a more extensive tunnel network uh, to uh, you know, operate underground than Israel thought? I mean, why, why does it appear at least that we have not yet achieved deterrence? Um, I don't believe in permanent uh, uh, deterrence. And uh, for 12 years, I wrote in all my uh, articles and uh, many of my interviews, I've uh, uh, presented the thesis that without uh, uh, this military destruction of Hamas, the situation in Gaza will continue to be the same and we'll have operations that we had uh, every three, four years. Uh, and uh, every time it is more difficult to, uh, to uh, uh, dissuade them. Uh, and uh, this is because this is a very uh, stubborn, ideological uh, moved uh, uh, organization which does not uh, take in consideration its uh, constituency. They received uh, uh, in 2005 when we left uh, the Gaza Strip uh, several uh, farms uh, with all the necessary infrastructure. There were some educational uh, buildings left uh, without being destroyed. There was a decision not to destroy. Uh, and when they came there, they transformed everything either in uh, military camps uh, or uh, they uh, simply destroyed them. And uh, uh, those which thought that uh, uh, we'll have a new Singapore were disappointed because first of all, the Palestinian Authority was weak and Hamas took uh, 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 the initiative in 2006. And then when they, by the way, won the elections, and then they made a military coup in 2007, July 2007, killed 200 members of the uh, Fatah or the PA security uh, uh, services and took complete control. And uh, uh, all the investment that uh, uh, we did, including with the Qataris, including with the European Union, uh, all the cement that was uh, sent there, we see where it uh, was, uh, uh, where it finished in the, uh, underground tunnels, uh, hundreds and hundreds uh, of uh, kilometers, I think. Uh, the corruption also, we see how uh, uh, beautiful uh, villas the leaders have there. And uh, clearly this uh, uh, is uh, very similar to what happens in other, uh, uh, if you want, Arab countries where the leaders practically are kind of uh, dictators, authoritarian leaders, and uh, don't take uh, uh, care, uh, or don't give a damn to their own population. We see it also uh, what uh, happens these days. Unfortunately, the, the population in Gaza is not able uh, to uh, revolt, uh, to rebel against the Hamas. There is a Fatah movement in, in uh, Gaza. Every time they try to, to stage some demonstration, like for the uh, birthday of Arafat, they are uh, immediately put in jail or uh, uh, beaten in the streets. And when President Sisi, for instance, in 2003, took uh, uh, control of Egypt and he had a, uh, the uh, support of a huge uh, movement, uh, Tamarid, the Tamarod, uh, the same movement began in Gaza. Uh, but uh, Hamas uh, uh, quite quickly uh, took control, put in, uh, in jail some of their leaders and uh, uh, this kind of movement uh, disappeared. Even when the, the jihadists tried to, uh, to start some activity in Gaza Strip, and there are jihadists there, by the way, most of them ex-members of uh, Hamas, uh, but they did not challenge uh, actually uh, Hamas. They began to be active only under the uh, Hamas rule, and they were used, by the way, as proxies. When one of these imams uh, de uh, decided that he will be the imam of Gaza, he will take control from uh, Hamas, uh, the, uh, uh, the Hamas uh, security service uh, not arrested him, assassinated him together with 25 of his uh, followers and uh, destroyed his mosque, okay? So this is a kind of government with which the population has to, uh, to, uh, to 
the challenge with which the population has to, to fight. Thank you very much, Sharon. Hi, uh, from uh, La Repubblica Italian uh, newspaper. Um, uh, I apologize if you already mentioned it, but I was uh, on the phone sometimes during this uh, briefing. Um, uh, I'm getting very uh, uh, different uh, information about the attempts to reach a ceasefire. So what, what is your evaluation at this moment, uh, considering that the attacks are on both sides are, are, are continuing? So what do you think will happen? I'm, uh, I'm, I, 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 there are people that talk about uh, the truth probably in two days or others say one week uh, and there are a lot of underground uh, uh, contacts. So what, uh, what is your evaluation? First of all, I think, I think uh, nobody knows, including the main actors. Uh, the Israeli government, especially the Israeli army, does not want to stop now. Uh, we want to use uh, the time, uh, necessary time, to destroy as much as possible uh, the uh, uh, Hamas infrastructure, because it is clear from the declarations of our government and our military that we won't enter the uh, Gaza Strip and we won't finish uh, Hamas uh, militarily like it should uh, happen, perhaps in the next uh, Israel administration. The same for Hamas. Hamas, as long as they uh, don't have a, a, a huge uh, amount of uh, uh, com combatants killed, and uh, for the moment uh, I speak about 200 perhaps, and uh, not more than that, uh, and also the civilians uh, are resisting there, from their point of view, like our, our civilians, they see what happens uh, in the Palestinian Authority and in Israel itself. So from their point of view, continue, continuing uh, the uh, firing of missiles is only uh, helping them to try to subvert, uh, to sabotage, uh, to uh, uh, produce uh, uh, riots and uh, uh, more and more terrorist activity uh, in the Palestinian Authority and also in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Israel itself. And we see also that there was some attempts in uh, Lebanon and in Jordan. Uh, by individuals, because you have in Jordan a huge Palestinian population, but we have a very important uh, lie in the uh, Jordanian army and security services. Uh, and uh, in uh, southern Lebanon, where I think Hezbollah permitted the Palestinians, which live there, by the way, uh, in some uh, huge uh, refugee camps in southern Lebanon, to try to penetrate the Israeli territory. Uh, and even there was an attempt to fire at, uh, the Golan Heights from, uh, from Syria. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, uh, the Hezbollah uh, will not enter the game, uh, uh, especially during this period, because the Iranians, uh, Tehran is very much interested in uh, uh, achieving a, a nuclear deal with the United States, and the same for the United States. So from this point of view, uh, Hezbollah, which serves only the interests of uh, Tehran, which is uh, actually, actually the huge uh, missile arsenal of the Iranian army, and also the important uh, only uh, ground force that uh, is called the Radwan force, a lead force, which uh, was a plan to penetrate our territory and take control of a village or several villages uh, by using, by the way, the tunnels that we destroyed, which also was an important uh, strategic uh, uh, achievement by our, our, our army. So the Hezbollah will not move. Perhaps they will permit such kind of uh, skirmishes, uh, not more than that. And also I think uh, uh, the uh, uh, international community is pressing Lebanon. So the Lebanon army uh, intervened lately and uh, uh, not like uh, Jordanian, but still they uh, pushed uh, uh, back some of these uh, demonstrators. Uh, so uh, for the moment, the, the issue uh, would be decided, I think, uh, uh, by the great uh, powers, first of all, the United States, as I said, which also is not interested in the continuation of, of the conflict uh, for not having a problem uh, for the administration. The administration has too many problems, internal problems, and also the Iranian issue and the Chinese issue. Uh, so uh, uh, the game is the United Nations Security Council, how much uh, the, the Biden administration with, uh, will uh, sustain support Israel. Uh, and uh, which kind of uh, revolution, resolution will be adopted by the Security Council. Uh, and uh, uh, even Russia began, began uh, to be involved in uh, the negotiating attempts, uh, mediating attempts, I think, uh, because uh, uh, as we know, Russia has good relations uh, with Israel lately. 
uh, quite good, I would say. And even uh, there are uh, rumors that uh, President Erdogan of uh, Turkey is interested uh, to mediate because he has excellent relations. And he's a kind of patron of Hamas. Uh, so uh, much depends, as I said, uh, on these uh, uh, external players because the two sides uh, have no interest uh, to stop. Uh, and uh, 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 again, because Israel will not enter uh, the Gaza territory, uh, the uh, uh, Hamas can still support uh, some as uh, load for uh, several uh, days or even weeks. But uh, in my opinion, by the end of this week, uh, it is very uh, uh, possible that we'll have a ceasefire. And here is also the problem, what kind of ceasefire? What will be the uh, uh, demands uh, and the goals of their players. Uh, Hamas all the time speaks about uh, Jerusalem because they want to present themselves since the beginning of the conflict as the patrons of uh, Jerusalem and of the mountain temple of Al-Aqsa uh, uh, and even of the Palestinian, Palestinians in the uh, Palestinian Authority. So uh, clearly Israel cannot accept uh, this kind of uh, uh, demands. Uh, Israel has uh, its own demands uh, for instance, to have the bodies of our two soldiers and liberation of two civilians, which are there against their will. Uh, and I don't see Hamas uh, accepting uh, such kind of uh, uh, agreement without the liberation of 1,000 at least uh, Hamas uh, prisoners. So uh, uh, it is not clear what, what kind of agreement, uh, if there would be an agreement, it would be perhaps a ceasefire, uh, quiet, but not a real uh, uh, ceasefire with uh, like it was in 2014. The agreement in 2014, by the way, which was, uh, uh, if you want, uh, mediated especially by Egypt, uh, decided that uh, the Palestinian Authority has the, the uh, task to take control of the Rafah uh, uh, customs uh, passage to from Gaza to Egypt and. Uh, uh, little by little to take control of all the uh, borders of Gaza, including the border with Israel, and in the end to take control of the security uh, uh, forces in uh, Gaza Strip. As you well know, nothing happened from this. I think that uh, first of all, uh, Hamas uh, did not, uh, they signed, I don't know if they signed or agreed orally, but uh, they did not accept in the end, and the Palestinian Authority did not have uh, the uh, force, the will, the political will, and also the, I think, the military means uh, to, uh, to take control. And this was very important because if at that, that, that moment, when there was also a very important support from the international community, uh, there could have been a change in the uh, uh, rules of the game. Okay, it didn't happen. And the same is now, the same situation. I don't see any uh, uh, structural change the next government, the Israeli government, will have to deal very, very seriously, not like the previous governments, and to decide if we want to have this kind of uh, uh, terrorist state co uh, continuously threatening uh, our population. And I don't know how a government can, uh, can accept that uh, half a million, at least, of uh, the citizens live in permanent uh, threat for the last 20 years. And I don't know, uh, I'm very worried how the young generation of uh, children is growing under this stress and what will be the uh, psychological and social uh, uh, impact of all these uh, uh, lives uh, under uh, missiles, uh, I think it's uh, time for a, a tough decision and to try to finish this kind of, but this also means that we have to negotiate to the Palestinian Authority, we have to coordinate uh, more closely to the American administration and also to uh, give incentives to the Palestinians in the West Bank uh, to accept a period of transi transition because it will not be a peace uh, in one year or two years in order to improve the situation and neutralize the military threat from Gaza. Thank you. Rio? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? This is Rio from Asahi newspaper in Japan. Uh, I'd like to ask about Iron Dome defense system, so anti-missile defense system in Israel. So um, IDF says it intercepted 90% of 
um, rockets, um, but there are some casualties in Israel. So how do you evaluate it? Do you think Iron Dome system is working well or not? Thank you. The Iron Dome system is excellent. It's excellent. And uh, uh, the 90%, uh, there is no any other system in the world that has this kind of performances. But again, there is no weapon which gives you 100% uh, uh, security. Uh, but what happened with Iron Dome uh, for the last, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, years, seven years at least since the uh, last operation in 2014, it has adapted to the new tactics of, uh, of the uh, Hamas. You see that uh, now Hamas is uh, firing, uh, firing uh, missiles uh, in service, okay? 20, 30 uh, uh, massive attacks in one minute. And this is very difficult because they are also using various azimuths in various directions. And still, Iron Dome is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, defending uh, uh, very well uh, our territory. I'll give you an example. For instance, uh, we have an arm uh, last uh, week, uh, uh, three, four days ago, two, twice in Ranana, which is north of Herzliya, uh, north of Tel Aviv. Uh, uh, and uh, there was alarm, but there was no uh, uh, missiles which fell in territory of uh, uh, Ranana, nor in Herzliya, nor in Kvarsaba, by the way, which means that the Iron Dome, which is in the defending Tel Aviv, uh, neutralized uh, the missiles which were intended for Ranana, not only Tel Aviv. Okay, so you see, now there is uh, also uh, talk uh, lately that there is a new weapon uh, which is used perhaps, uh, uh, I don't know how, uh, I saw it uh, in a very serious, on a very serious defense, uh, defense uh, website, that there, there is a laser uh, weapon, which is used lately, which uh, is uh, uh, also quite uh, efficient, and uh, uh, especially it is much more cheaper than the Iron Dome, because the Iron Dome is a, a very expensive weapon, and uh, this also is a very important uh, financial an economic cost on Israel. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Hana, would you like to go ahead and have a follow-up? Ken, Ken, uh, uh, yes, Eli, I, I would like um, to follow up a bit and add a few points, if you, if, uh, if I may. Uh, of the missiles, um, you mentioned, yes, the 12, uh, 12 or 14,000, um, I understand you said it's not necessarily the updated data, but let's say to, to what uh, date more or less or year or how many months ago that's update, updated as far as you know. Um, and also whether you can tell us of that figure, how many are long range? Um, Again, I, I think I, I don't have numbers because I have only uh, open sources and uh, Okay. I think that even the uh, uh, Israeli intelligence does not exactly know uh, how many, and especially how uh, how uh, many long range. I will give you the uh, an example in uh, uh, the case of Hezbollah in the 2006 Second Lebanon War. Uh, they had at that time some, uh, I think, 23,000 to 30,000 missiles, uh, but they had uh, several uh, uh, dozens or, or perhaps even more long-range missiles which could have reached uh, Tel Aviv in 2006. These missiles were destroyed uh, by the Air Force in the first 34 hours of the conflict because there was exact, exact intelligence where they were stored, okay? We see that now what happens in the uh, camp of Hamas, they uh, uh, diversified, I mean, you don't have a storage uh, big, big storage for all the missiles, okay, which could be uh, uh, hit in one or two or three hits. Uh, they are almost, uh, uh, or most of them, they are already in uh, specific underground uh, uh, positions, uh, which are uh, uh, activated only when there is a decision to fire them. And we saw, for instance, uh, uh, yesterday, I think, uh, uh, there is already already a change in the uh, Air Force, our Air Force uh, tactics, and they found the way how to destroy the moment they are uh, uh, popping up to destroy 50 of these kind of uh, uh, positions. But there are many more. Uh, Gaza is a huge uh, 
relatively huge territory because they are also using human shields. They are using the mosque, they are using schools. And clearly uh, at this moment, at least uh, the uh, uh, IDF and Israel does not want to have more uh, civilians. We remember in the, uh, the where are you saying, uh, um, uh, 2014 uh, operation, uh, uh, the, there was, uh, I think, two mosques which were destroyed, and there was there, uh, uh, there, there were there uh, uh, missiles, and there was the only, by the way, journalists which are in Gaza, okay, including those which are in the Al Jazeera uh, building. Uh, they don't know exactly what happens under their nose. Or, you see, uh, I had a movie that I disseminated, and uh, if you send me uh, your email, I'll send you this movie that in 2009, uh, during the operation that uh, uh, was uh, going on in, in Gaza, uh, there was at that time uh, only one or two bu uh, uh, high buildings, and there was one building uh, of uh, 14 uh, uh, floors. And the uh, correspondent of Al Arabiya, a lady, she was on the top and uh, uh, speaking directly to her, her studios, uh, saying, Look, uh, Israelis are firing on us, on the journalists. And then after uh, uh, 10 seconds, I said, no, no, no. I'm said that this is a missile fired by Hamas from our own building downstairs, okay? So uh, you understand what happens. And uh, uh, I knew uh, an Italian uh, uh, journalist, a known uh, a war journalist, which was in uh, uh, Gaza in the 2010s, and he succeeded and uh, uh, he could, uh, uh, published this information about the schools when, only, when he, he was outside Gaza. And in 2014, only an Indian, an Indian team for a, uh, from an Indian TV station, uh, they were near a school uh, where uh, uh, Hamas used missiles from the school and they were the only ones which succeeded in filming uh, and uh, uh, smuggling to the exterior, uh, the movie of this firing of missiles from a school. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually have this uh, clip. You sent it to me. I already sent it to some journalists. If you'd like, I can uh, forward this uh, to you guys. Also, the um, operation that you were referring to in the last question was Protected Edge. Um, do we have any more questions? Yes, yes. I didn't finish my follow-up, if possible. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Eli, uh, First of all, a uh, comment about what you've just said. I remember those films <coughs> of the Indians, and uh, there was also a film of a Finnish correspondent uh, very near the Shifa hospital. She had just uh, seen the launching of a missile from there. It was published, I remember, by the GPO and a series of uh, like revelations after the war. Now, um, still regarding the arsenal, do they still receive something from outside or they produce all of it uh, inside Gaza. And uh, the last question is, what can you tell us? Because yesterday was a headline in, I think, in the Times of Israel or the Jerusalem Post. Okay. I don't saying know that, no, I say, first of all, this question about whether Hamas still receives something for its arsenal from outside Gaza or it produces it all within Gaza. And the, the last question um, is, uh, what what material do you have or what uh, details do you have about this military intelligence uh, command of uh, Hamas in the media building that was destroyed? Um, yesterday there was a headline, I think, in the Jerusalem Post saying that Israel has shown the smoking gun regarding that uh, building to the United States. But there was, as far as I know, if I didn't miss it, there wasn't a revelation really of the details. Do you know anything else? What was that smoking gun could have been? No, I don't know what's about. I don't know this, uh, this issue. Uh, the smuggling uh, was stopped practically by the Egyptians uh, because uh, the uh, Hamas smuggled weapons to uh, uh, Daesh in uh, Sinai. Uh, they smuggled also fighters. Uh, from Hamas to Sinai and uh, wounded people which came for treatment in, uh, in Gaza. 
there was a crisis, a long crisis between uh, the Egyptian government and the Hamas. And uh, after destroying many of the tunnels, there were 900 tunnels, 900 tunnels. The Egyptians destroyed many of them, and then they used a sort of a water canal uh, in order to, uh, not to permit the constructions of new uh, tunnels. Uh, we must take in consideration that on the other side of the border, uh, in the Sinai, there are also Palestinians. Uh, in many of the El Arish, uh, in this area, there are uh, Palestinians who are supporters of Hamas, uh, some support uh, Daesh, and there is a economic smuggling, okay, uh, a lot of economic smuggling, uh, and also military one, especially when uh, the Gaddafi government uh, fell in 2011. Uh, so groups in, uh, uh, jihadist groups in, uh, in uh, Libya sent a lot of uh, missiles from the uh, Libyan arsenal to, to Gaza Strip. Uh, these last years, I think the most of this was produced by uh, inside uh, Gaza. Uh, uh, probably the, the plans and the uh, improvements, uh, the upgrading came with uh, uh, software uh, from outside. As I said, uh, there was this Tunisian which uh, made the experiments in Tunisia and uh, one in uh, uh, Malaysia. And they smuggled uh, only prob probably uh, uh, software uh, and uh, technological uh, uh, electronic tools, not more than that. Uh, and this is very important that Israel succeeded in this operation to destroy much of this infrastructure. I mean, the fabrics that were producing the missiles and killing uh, the nucleus of engineers which were dedicated to this task. So uh, the evaluation is that it will take much more time to Hamas if they will stay uh, close like now, okay? It is not sure how the situation will change, but if we uh, uh, stay close and uh, uh, Israel will take the necessary measures, it will be much more difficult to develop a new uh, serious infrastructure uh, in Gaza in the next years. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, if you uh, receive, uh, uh, if you want to, uh, to follow up and uh, uh, have my email from... Uh, sure, Oregon. I will send it. And I also, if, if you can uh, send me the afterwards the uh, uh, links to your articles, I'll be very interested. Uh, we also, as an institute, uh, have interest to see what uh, uh, the uh, media publishes uh, from our uh, big. Thank you very Thank much. Salad. Thanks, We're going to end this here. Thank you, Dr. Kamwan, for taking the time to Thank speak you. to us this evening. Thank you, journalists, for joining our recording on tonight's, uh, this evening's Zoom conference. We'll be sent to you in a follow-up email, along with the video he mentioned and some uh, content to it. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All the best to all of you, especially those which are here in Israel. Bye. <laughs>